Let's say you invested $1,000 in this company's stock in February 1994. Today, that $1,000 would be worth $2 million. You're probably wondering what company that is. It's not Amazon, it's not Microsoft, or even Google. In fact, it's not a tech giant at all, but an energy drink company. Monster Beverage Corporation, or Monster for short. We've had a buy on the stock for a decade plus straight. Think about it, the next global mega brand. Three decades ago, Monster's stock was trading for less than a nickel. But since then, it's appreciated by about 200,000%, making Monster the best performing stock in 30 whole years. Yep, you heard that right. You can't be as lucky as they've been for as long as they've been without being really good at running a business. This is a company that today is going to do $7 million in sales in 23, probably break $8 billion in 24. CNBC tried to find out how this company has had such a monster rally under the radar. In 1990, South African entrepreneurs Rodney Sachs and Hilton Schlossberg bought a struggling juice company by the name of Hanson Natural and immediately took it public after decades operating as a private entity. The co-CEOs bet early on an immature energy drink market, initially launching Hanson's Energy in 1997, five years before their infamous Monster Drink, and 15 years before the company would rename itself Monster Beverage Corporation. It was bought out of bankruptcy. Then they created the Monster brand out of nowhere, launched it, and then it just kept on building and building. And, and what's fascinating is they built it the right way. They were very slow and methodical in how they built the distribution of the brand, making sure it was strong in every market that it was in. The company had made enough strides that the Coca-Cola company took notice. The soda giant bought a 16.7% stake in exchange for $2.15 billion in cash. The stake has since grown to 20%. Coke transferred the ownership of its energy drinks to Monster, who in turn traded its non-energy drink businesses, including Hansen's juice products, to Coke. Additionally, the two companies strengthened an existing distribution agreement. Coke became Monster's preferred global distribution partner and agreed that Monster's brands would be the only energy drinks it would distribute. Since the Coke partnership, Monster's market cap has about tripled. The Coke agreement was a landmark event for this company. They've obviously been showing that they can grow globally, and that's what effectively they've been doing, what's been driving most of the growth and the outperformance in the stock. Monster's brilliance? Knowing its customer selling its best seller, Monster, for the same price as main competitor Red Bull's product, only twice the volume. It really resonated, especially with younger consumers, blue collar workers, which continues to be the bread and butter of the business today. Pursuing that core customer has remained the company's key strategy. Instead of traditional marketing, it prioritizes sponsorships, targeting extreme and unconventional sports, drawing many fans from those bases. What they were able to do is figure out who their consumer was, is, and go after events that that consumer paid attention to. Monster drinks aren't sold in bars nor marketed on TV. Despite many attempts, the company never responded to CNBC's request for comment or interview. And presumably, the company has never conducted a public interview. They do earnings calls four times a year and one or two other events historically, and that's about it. So they've let the results speak for themselves. The way they've built the brand is, is quite unique, less about the category and more about the lifestyle and what you can accomplish with the product. Monster offers a variety of products, anything from alcohol to coffee to other energy drink brands. Unlike technology that demands constant upgrading, these types of products deliver steady returns. They rarely become obsolete. But even more central to Monster's success is that it operates as a holding company with dozens of subsidiaries that handle and develop various beverage brands, some under the Monster name and others that operate mostly independently. This is a business that is essentially a marketing company. They're, they're essentially selling a brand. There's very little capital intensity 
in, in the business. They produce way more cash than they can ever spend, which is a really good problem to have. The company is asset light relative to other consumer staple businesses. It doesn't have many manufacturing facilities and it doesn't distribute its own products, hence the importance of the Coca-Cola partnership. What I think Monster's been able to do is very rare, actually. They've been able to take a master brand and they've been able to cut it across sub-segments of the beverage industry. Even Coca-Cola, which is one of the greatest brands in the world, has not been able to do that. Still, it took decades to grow the company into the drink behemoth it is today. It really didn't get going until they introduced Monster. They had introduced some other energy drink brands in the late 90s, and for various reasons, they never fully took off. And it wasn't until Monster was created and really started driving growth. For 31 consecutive years, Monster's sales have grown. In 2023, the company achieved record third quarter net sales of $1.86 billion, up 14.3% from the same period in 2022. Its Monster Energy Drinks segment, which includes several brands, represents the majority of that. In 1999, energy drinks were classified as new age beverages, representing just 9% of the segment. Though not a perfect comparison, the same analytics company predicted energy drinks represent about 21% of the entire beverage industry in 2024. The energy drink industry has expanded rapidly. Dozens of new products and companies have entered the market. In 2023, energy drinks brought in $21 billion in revenue. Still, Monster, then Red Bull, are the largest energy drink producers. 57.2% of the category is made up of other players, like Ghost Energy, owned by Anheuser-Busch InBev. Overall, the category is expected to continue growing revenues even as additional products arrive on the market. Consumers see a greater value in buying an energy drink today than a lot of other things. Everybody can continue to win even if the base gets bigger. Monster bought one of its biggest competitors, Bang Energy, in 2023 after it went bankrupt, a strategic move that netted them a new manufacturing facility. The company's past returns don't necessarily guarantee future gains, but analysts say its stock is primed to keep up the momentum. We've been recommending it for a decade. When you outperform this long, <laughs> by this much, you should be a known entity at this point. But we're still in the very early innings of this of this global story. This is going to last a lot longer. This is not just going to end because they've had all this massive outperformance in the stock market. It's not as big as it can be in China or India. You know, it's not in every sub-segment like you see in the U.S. So there's a lot of expansion opportunities. There are, however, some risks ahead. Sachs and Schlossberg steered the company into the 21st century and through explosive growth, but are now in their 70s. No clear successor has been named. These are really, really sharp managers. The decision making is very consolidated, and I think they need to start thinking about creating comfort with the investor community that there is a legitimate succession plan. Bans add another obstacle. Some countries and retailers have already implemented restrictions as the caffeine content in these drinks has spiked. Though the UK does have a legal age mandate, it hasn't stopped people from buying the products. Monster continues to grow there. From a company standpoint, none of that's really had much of an impact. From a protection standpoint, you really haven't heard a peep out of folks for, for a while because, as I said, the FDA has ultimately kind of said, what do you want us to do? As of February 2024, the US has no national regulations, and analysts say they are cautiously optimistic that none will manifest in the near future. A 2013 Senate hearing on energy drink risks resulted in no industry changes. And Monster fans don't seem to care. This stuff isn't particularly healthy in, in the conventional sense, and yet the consumer seems to defy that view. They're willing to look past that for a once a day, once a week consumption occasion that they treat themselves. And so I, I think that's one of those things that's maybe a little bit harder to understand, and yet clearly has been a factor in driving growth and probably will be a factor in driving growth going forward.